The other very common formats um, come in obviously QuickTime and ABI. QuickTime is Macintosh based, um, has been ever since Macintosh has been alive. ABI is PC based. Um, there is pros and cons of both formats. Um, QuickTime is a great format in the sense that um, it can store a lot of information including time code, um, header information for chapter markers, storing um, XML data from programs to programs that get used, all that sort of stuff, so it can actually wrap a lot of information in its file. Um, it is a terrible format as far as gamma shifting goes, and let's hope Apple fixes it in Snow Leopard. Um, so ever since QuickTime was born, um, it's had issues um, with gamma, so it's something to watch out for. You'll probably notice that all of a sudden you've got this great looking picture and you change it from one codec to another or you render it out of After Effects or through Final Cut or something and all of a sudden the picture goes milky. Um, you've probably all seen it. Um, get used to it. <laughs> unfortunately, keep an eye on it. Um, it's unfortunately the nature of QuickTime and the way Apple was set up. Um, it actually comes from Apple originally being designed as a computer for print and print's based around a 1.8 gamma um, and everything we do with television is actually based around a 2.2 gamma. So Apple internally the whole time is trying to play with something 1.8 or 2.2 and they don't seem to get it right that often. Um, ABI is the format that is very common for PCs. Um, so both QuickTime and ABIs can come in an uncompressed format. They also of late support um, formats um, by the likes of ProRes um, under QuickTime and under ABI, um, Avid have written a similar codec to ProRes called DNxHD, um, which runs out of Avid both offline and online. Um, these new codecs are brilliant for smaller systems at home or don't have a lot of hard drive space, um, doing long form, all that sort of stuff. Um, we've tested them and had quite a good look at them and as far as a, they call them a lossless format um, So they are a compressed format, but theoretically not they're meant to look like uncompressed To the eye they actually do look like uncompressed. They are very very good codecs um, But if you actually start diving and splitting the channels between red green and blue and you actually start doing some heavy compositing with them They do have their limitations um, so if you were to say shoot something on 35 and scan it to ProRes and key it and shoot something on 35 and scan it to an uncompressed file, the uncompressed file will still key better. Um, but then, you know, the ProRes is half to quarter of the size. Um, and same with the DNx um, HD from Avid, um, exactly the same deal. At the end of the day, compression has to have a downfall somewhere. Um, so there, you know, maybe the future might change, but at the end of the day, if you want the highest quality possible for doing effects work, grading, online, all that sort of stuff, you still can't be uncompressed. Um, then we actually get into um, all our formats that are starting to come from cameras nowadays and edit systems actually trying to support those um, formats natively. Um, so I might briefly go through those. Um, then I'll actually show some examples of compression um, and talk about what software we use um, and then probably the best is to elaborate on what people want to know more about either the formats that are coming in or the formats that are going out or both. Um, so just quickly, formats, um, some formats that you've probably seen um, over the last few years arise. Um, um, is there many people in here that cut on Avid or are we all FCP nowadays? You're still Avid? Avid? Good to see. I'm actually cutting an FCP nowadays, but we still have, or we actually have an app online in the building nowadays. But, um, okay, um, I don't know the latest incarnation of Avid. They seem to be keeping up reasonably well as far as inputting a lot of these formats, but they usually seem to be a little bit behind Final Cut Pro as far as inputting um, the formats. Final Cut, the way they've kept their system quite open, um, it's very easy for them to quickly write a codec adaption and new camera comes out and you know, quick little patch and all of a sudden can import that which no problems. Have it um, have to go through a little bit more. Um, but they don't seem to be too far behind nowadays. Um, P2, we've all seen it. Um, probably it gets shot to um, little flashcards. We hope the flashcards don't crash when we import them in the computer and the person hasn't lost their day of rushes. But 
that's the format. Um, it was very popular a few years ago. Um, it's getting superseded by formats like XDCAMEX. Um, it's still a good format for its file size. Um, it's based on the H.262 standard as far as compression routine goes, so it is compressed. Looks good to the eye, it's absolutely horrible to grade and care. Um, that's my theory on grading, but you know, <laughs> you can all have your own. But um, it, it, you can't push it very far, it does fall apart, um, but it does to the actual eye, providing that they've shot it reasonably nice on set. Um, it's quite a good format, and when you consider, you know, like a um, small HVX, um, I think it's a 202, is like $9,000, considering the picture quality you get out of it, it's actually not bad bang for buck. Um, and if you're doing corporate work or um, documentaries and all that, it's a great little camera. Um, then Sony bought out the, um, well they've had XD cam for a while, but um, they've gone through several inclinations of their compression. Um, so originally XD cam started out also as a H.264 um, format, um, and now it's actually up to a H.264 um, format, or a very slight incarnation of it. Um, smaller file size, but actually better compression than P2. Um, the cameras, um, just because they're like, and they're, they're going to leap off themselves forever, but at the moment I do believe that the XD cam format is a better format. Um, they've got several modes for storing however much you want to record to a card. Um, the lower megabit modes are certainly more compressed, so it all comes down to your choice on set and what you want to shoot and how much quality you want to actually get out of a camera. Same deal with P2, looks great, start to key it, you'll start to see the errors start to pull the red, green and blue channel apart, you'll start to see the errors, start to push the grade, you'll start to see the errors. Um, compression's got a long way to go before they actually start recording file sizes that small um, to actually, um, you know, have something that's not going to fall apart when you key or grade and have the spectrum of colour. Um, XD Cam HD422, um, they've actually in some ways stepped back as far as compression goes. Um, it's for their bigger cameras, um, but what they are doing is getting more colour information, which is a major help. So you often find a lot of these, um, like the P2 and the XD cam formats, where they put most of their compression into is not their luminance channel, but it's their colour channels, and they'll just destroy a certain colour channel. So you know, you might, in the case of P2, um, you can get really, really noisy in low lights and blues and that sort of stuff. So uh, they're just trying to, all they're trying to do is try and hide where they've got to put this compression in. Um, and they always do it in colour channels and that's what suffers. But it's better than doing it in the luminance channel because if you did it in the luminance channel, all of a sudden your picture wouldn't look great. Um, red is probably another format that I thought I'd talk about um, briefly and we can elaborate on it later only because one, it's a format that we're using here a lot now. Um, we actually own the cameras as well as deal with it and have spent 12 months studying the workflow and the ultimate workflow and all that sort of stuff. And it's a format that you are going to see more and more because um, it's obviously um, not a replacement for film, but unfortunately I don't think film's going to be around for that much longer. Um, not because film is getting superseded, film is still a brilliant acquisition format, um, but there just simply isn't enough going through the labs for them to stay open um, at the pace they're going. Um, and the biggest problem is labs make all their money from prints, and as soon as the cinemas, which they're talking about, go digital, prints aren't going to happen at all. Prints don't happen, they don't have to re the wheel and do DI colour grading, which I think is what they're trying to do at the moment. Um, so, with that happening, um, and also, um, Budgets of this year, everybody's looking for, you know, not having to roll out 15 rolls of 35 and pay for it. 